Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to knit from a chart. This chart that I have here is for fern leaf lace. It's a simple lace stitch. It's worked over eight rows on a multiple of six stitches plus nine. So that's what this chart represents. It represents the eight rows of the pattern and then the six stitches plus nine for a total of 15 stitches for one stitch pattern repeat. Usually the way knitting charts are set up for flat knitting are your first row, which starts in the lower right hand corner, is read from right to left and your right side rows are usually numbered with odd numbers. So over here, I have one, three, five, and seven. And your wrong side rows are read from left to right. And the wrong side rows are usually numbered with even numbers. So over here, I have two, four, six, and eight. A lot of times with charts, you might see a red box around a certain number of stitches. It might be a different color, but they're usually red. That is your the part of the pattern that you repeat. So this pattern is a multiple of six. So these six stitches are the multiple for the stitch pattern. And then these stitches to the left and right of the box are the balancing stitches. That is the plus nine of the pattern. So if you were knitting a scarf that had uh, the pattern being repeated, say, four times, you would be repeating the stitches within the box four times. Each box of my chart represents a stitch on the needles and then the symbols inside of the boxes tell me what action I need to take with my stitches. Over here is the key for the chart and all of the symbols and their meanings. You always need to check your key to see what the symbols mean because not everybody will use the same symbols to mean the same thing. Um, a circle is usually going to be a yarn over but let's take this symbol, for instance, this open triangle. In my chart, that is a double decrease, a slip one, knit two together, pass the slipped stitch over. Somebody else might use that same symbol to tell you to do something else. So it's really important that you check the key that comes with your chart so you know what the symbols mean. When you're knitting in the round from a chart, the way you're going to read your chart is every row you'll be reading from right to left. Because when you knit flat, you work your row and then you turn it over and then you work back. So that's how you read your chart. You read back and forth. But for round knitting or circular knitting, since the right side of the work is always facing you, you're always going to read your rows right to left because every row is a right side row and that's really the only difference between charts for flat knitting and circular knitting flat knitting you read right to left left to right circular knitting always read right to left also your chart may omit the wrong side rows, especially in a chart like this one. Every wrong side row is just a purl row, so your pattern may just tell you all wrong side rows are purled, they're not included in your chart. So you may come across a chart that is showing right side rows only for a flat piece of knitting. So again, it's really important to check the instructions that come with your chart so you know what exactly your chart represents and how you are to read the chart. 
These guidelines can be used for not only lace charts like I have here, but for color work charts as well. So again, just a guideline. Things may be set up differently depending on who designed your pattern or what your pattern is for. So always check all information that comes with your pattern before you begin. There's a lace shawl that I'm working on and my chart, each row is red from right to left. And then there's a the center of the shawl. And then I work the same row from left to right. So my shawl has a center part and then the left and right sides are a mirror image of each other. So I'm working each row of that chart twice. So that's why it's important that you check all of the information with your pattern so you are working your chart correctly. And now I'm going to knit this little sample and I'll be casting on 15 stitches because I'm only going to work my stitch pattern once. So I only need the 15 stitches that are shown here in my chart. Again, if you're doing something wider, you would be working the stitches within the box more than one time. Okay, I have my 15 stitches here, and I'll begin knitting. Again, I'm knitting flat, so I'll be working my first row, which is a right side row. Start here in your lower right hand corner, and I'll be working this way from right to left. Looking at my key, I know that my first two stitches are going to be knit stitches. Then I have a yarn over, followed by a knit stitch. I have a double decrease, a knit stitch, a yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, double decrease, knit, yarn over, and finally two knit stitches. So that's what I'll be doing in my first row here. Oops. So that's my first row of my chart here. I'll be turning my work. And for row two, my chart tells me that all of the stitches in my wrong side row, row two, are going to be purled. Now for row three, my next right side row, I'll be starting this time. I'll be working three knit stitches, and then I have a yarn over, a double decrease, a yarn over, three knit stitches, a yarn over, double decrease, 
yarn over and three knit stitches to finish my row. Turning my work, in row four again, all of my stitches are going to be purl stitches. Okay, my row five, I'll be doing a knit stitch. And then this symbol is a knit two together. Then I have a knit, a yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, a double decrease, a knit, yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, another decrease, that's a slip one, knit one, pass the slipped stitch over, and then finally a knit stitch to finish my row five. Okay, now my row six, again, I'm just purling all stitches for this row. And now my row seven, a, knit, a decrease, a yarn over, three knit stitches, a yarn over with a double decrease, and another yarn over, three knit stitches, a yarn over, a decrease, and finally a knit stitch. And then finally the last row of my pattern, again I'll just be purling all of my stitches. And row 8 of course is the last row of my stitch pattern. So if this were for a pattern for something, let's just say a scarf, 
unless there was uh, some other kind of stitch pattern in between my fern leaf lace. I would just be starting over again with row one of the pattern or you of course would work however your instructions tell you to work. But here is the stitch or the sample that you get when you work from the chart. But that's it. It's actually really simple to knit from a chart. And I have a second chart here. And this one looks a little bit different from the one that I just showed you. I of course have my key over here with all of my symbols and what they mean. And then I have my rows set up here and my columns. And, oh, I didn't mention, um, your chart may or may not have the columns numbered like I have up here. A lot of times you'll just see the numbers on the sides, but you may also see uh, the columns numbered. They might be numbered at the top or the bottom. Now, there's a different symbol in this chart. It's all of these X's. You might see uh, X's or you might see gray boxes. And what those are is a no stitch. And you're thinking, well, how can there be no stitches? This chart would be for a triangle shawl worked from the bottom up. And a triangle shawl worked from the bottom up starts on a small number of stitches. This one would start out with three stitches. And then you, for this one, for instance, would increase at the beginning of every row. So you're starting out with a small number of stitches. But my chart has all of these boxes here. And that's just to make the chart um, a, a uniform size. Although I have seen charts that are that look like stair steps on the edge. Instead of having boxes with a no stitch symbol, there just are no boxes. But a lot of times you will see something that looks just like what I have here. So as you grow your triangle shawl, you're gaining stitches, of course. You're getting more and more. So by the time I would reach this point in my chart, I would have a full row of stitches. And let me show you uh, what I mean with this chart. So if I am working on a triangle shawl that starts out with three stitches, I would cast on my three stitches. Okay, so that would, this is my row one. Again, this chart would be read from right to left for right side rows and left to right for wrong side rows. Here are the three stitches that I have cast on right here. This is the increase at the beginning of the first row of my pattern. So I would make my yarn over and knit my three stitches. That's row one of my pattern. So now I have four stitches on my needle. Let's look at row two of my pattern. Okay, you ignore the boxes with the X. Here's the increase at the beginning of my row. And then here are the four stitches that I already have on my needle. And in this chart, the box with the black dot would be a purl stitch. So in row two of my pattern here, Again, I would make my decrease, or I'm sorry, my increase, and purl my four stitches. Now I have five stitches on my needle. Let's look at our next right side row, row three. You ignore all of these boxes because those stitches don't exist yet. Here we have one, two, three, four, five. Five stitches, because each box represents a stitch. 
Those are the stitches that I have on my needle. And then here is the increase at the beginning of my row. Okay, so you can kind of see already I have a little triangle forming here. And if I were just to continue working in that manner, back and forth, adding a stitch at the beginning of each row, eventually I would end up with a triangle shawl. So that is what the X's or grayed out boxes mean in a chart and how you can have no stitches.